Good morning. On behalf of my colleagues, Wing Commander Praful Bakshi, Major Vinod Krishna and myself, Nalin S. Kohli, we extend a very warm welcome to all our viewers joining us live here at Rajpath, New Delhi on various channels of Doordarshan, including Doordarshan Metro Channel in India and DD International Channel, which is reaching out to millions of viewers outside the country. Today is India's 51st Republic Day and the Golden Jubilee of the Republic. Indeed, a historic day. It was on this day that the Indian Republic was born, laying the foundation of a sovereign democratic nation based on justice, liberty, equality and fraternity, assuring dignity of the individual and unity and integrity of the nation. This is a day of great significance and is celebrated throughout the country with ceremonial parades in the state capital. This is the historic Rajpath in Delhi, where one can see Rashtrapati Bhavan flanked by North Block and South Block on either side, and the entire street of Rajpath leading down to India Gate at the other end, which has been lined with flags. The Indian flag, the Indian tricolor, and people from all walks of life and people from different parts of the country collecting here to witness it in person. This is the area opposite the saluting days. The Sarnath Lion Capital, placed on a high pedestal representing a stupa and a beautiful floral pattern which has been created so fresh and lovely on this not so dull, I would say a rather bright morning. It has been raining here last night, but today the skies are clear. And Rajpath here is drawing people from all walks of life and different parts of the country to be a part of this historic moment as the nation celebrates its 51st Republic Day. A magnificent view right from the top of India Gate. But more details from my colleague, Praful Bakshi. Thank you, Nalin. This is indeed a memorable day for Republic of India and all the people who have gathered here in their fine color, colorful clothes. In fact, the talking of color, this rain has brought a uh, little advantage for us because the colors are further accentuated uh, in this morning and when the clouds are parting and the rays of sun will filter through, it will look magnificent and beautiful. And here is the Parliament House, south, north and south block on a left. We can see and fluttering of the color in the far end of the road and the Rajpath now meeting the President's house and as it, the road comes down from the Parliament House, the Rashtrapati Bhavan, towards India Gate, we'll see the crowd thronging on both sides, very eager. The parade will take place uh, coming from the left of uh, the President's DS towards right, that's India Gate. The entire parade will take place in that manner and with the visibility now improving, uh, I can see the crowd now discussing whether the fly pass will take place or not and it is a, and I'm very sure the fly pass will take place because the weather is further improving and visibility is very good. We have now all the guests coming, coming in in their woolens and the colorful clothes and of course braving the chill of the this January winter morn. Uh, Major Vinod Krishna would like to add something to that? Most well, certainly, just the ideal conditions for the befitting occasion, 51st Republic Day. The stands are now filling in and these celebrations are held in Delhi and these celebrations also that is the India Gate, these celebrations head the celebrations all over the country, not only within India, but in cities all across the world, wherever Indian people live. Of course, the celebrations are head, are headed by these uh, major celebrations in Delhi, because it is Delhi which represents India, which is the heart of India. Delhi, a city of 3,000 years of history. In 1000 BC, it was started by the Aryan invaders as Indraprastha, that is the magnificently decorated uh, arena. 
around uh, that is the commentators box Namaskar. right up front Amar where you may be India seeing Gilles. a glimpse of all Mera the commentators the other panelists the control systems guests from the diplomatic corps and uh, India gate senior officials, government officials, special invitees. These are also foreign dignitaries who are representing the, their governments here as India celebrates its uh, Republic Day. In the background you see Rashtrapati Bhavan, the former house of Viceroys of India, which, was, which is now the presidential place, the famous imposing India Gate. It is uh, officially inaugurated, it was in 1931 by Duke of Connaught. Uh, in fact, he had laid the foundation stone of this victory arch, commemorating the supreme sacrifice of more than 90,000 Indian soldiers during the Great War of 1914. The words that are inscribed on the top of this uh, beautiful monument, the India Gate, the words are, to the dead of the Indian armies who fell honored in battles within India and abroad. The immortal flame which was uh, started here in 1971 to commemorate the great sacrifice during the 71 war, which, is, uh, which has remained lit since 1971. India Gate is placed opposite the National Stadium and is fed by 11 roads. This magnificent structure, the surroundings of which are really brimming with life in the evenings uh, for Delhiites whenever outsiders visit Delhi, it may be a good occasion for you to see what it means. These are the names inscribed, 90,000 soldiers as I mentioned earlier, uh, who have done supreme sacrifice for the safeguarding of the interests of the country. The names inscribed on Indigate, as uh, Vinod was just mentioning, are for those soldiers who laid down their lives during World War I and later on during the Afghan War in 1919. And to commence the program actually on Republic Day, the Prime Minister Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee will lead the nation in paying homage to these martyrs as well as those who are commemorated by the eternal flame which has been on since 1972, which we can see the Amar Javan or the immortal soldier symbolized through an inverted rifle and a helmet atop. All the three services are represented here at India Gate. The flags of the three services flutter and on a bright morning as today, with a light breeze in the air, they are fluttering gloriously, no doubt about it. In a short while, the Honourable Prime Minister will be arriving here and will pay homage to the martyrs by laying wreath at the Amar Javan Jyoti at India Gate. An inter-services guard consisting of 150 rank and file is led by Lieutenant Colonel K.K. Pant, which participates in this ceremony. As the Prime Minister arrives, they are all awaiting the arrival of the Prime Minister. In fact, today's weather is opening up. Golden rays of a sun on this golden jubilee of India's becoming a republic. Certainly lighting the entire Rajput, filtering through through the scattering of clouds which have certainly reduced over the last few hours. And now we can uh, see uh, a full view of the India Gate flanked by the uh, with the canopy in the backdrop and the inter-services guard has, is all prepared to present the salute to the dignitaries, the Prime Minister as he lays his wreath at the Amar Jawan Jyoti in the memory of the fallen brave. And here the crowd now is very eagerly waiting for the ceremonies to begin. And in fact, that is the VIP enclosure, and right behind what you are just about seeing is uh, the commentator's booth. That's right, we are. Commentators from not only television, but radio and the live commentary which goes on to Rajpath is all announced through this area. You can see uh, one of the control towers there, which uh, is helping in the transmission, which is taking the entire transmission live not only uh, within India, but also to other nations. That is the main saluting days uh, towards the right with the floral decoration where the Supreme Commander and, of course, uh, the President of India will be taking the salute. And uh, now 
is a view of the sky and the dark clouds. Of course, they are giving way to the rays of the sun and one or two birds still lingering on. But today the bird activity is certainly going to be very less. Here is the bird's eye view of the Rajpath from India Gate side towards Parliament House. It looks magnificent once again. This is the monument to the fallen braves. As mentioned by Major Vinod Krishna, it has 90,000 names of the martyrs who laid their lives for the country, armed airmen, sailors, as well as soldiers. Of course, the majority of them are soldiers. And that is the inter-services guard commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Pant, waiting for the arrival and the eternal flame which burns ceaselessly for 24 hours, 12 months, throughout the year. And that is the symbol of the fallen brave. An inverted rifle with a helmet on top is in the memory and honor of the fallen soldier. In fact, uh, if I may add, that being the golden jubilee of the Republic, it's a day of great int introspection. And when we are looking at the sacrifices of all the soldiers through times who have fought and given up their lives to uh, uh, protect the honor and dignity of this nation, it's a very important thing to bear in our mind as we are not only celebrating 50 years of a republic and we are doing uh, celebrating our 51st Republic Day, we've also entered a new century. Now, I would like to also add that uh, why go far, why go long past? Let us look at the year that has just gone by. The year that was significant for our democracy, for our defense forces, the cavalcade of the Prime Minister now on view. The world power has uh, seen that in India, it is the voice of people that counts. Our defense forces valiantly beat back the Pakistani aggression in the heights of Kargil and the Prime Minister's cavalcade are marching in, triumphantly fluttering flags as if welcoming this uh, cavalcade moving from our left from the Rashtrapati Bhavan coming towards our right, that is towards the east, down Rajpath towards the magnificent India Gate. The four uh, 506 uh, members of the Defence Forces have been honoured by the President today and the greatest honours have gone of course to Captain Vikram Batra, Captain Vikram Batra, who gets the Paramita Chakra, Lieutenant Manoj Kumar Pandey, Grenadier Yuginder Singh Yadav and Rifleman Sanjay Kumar who have been honoured with Parambir Chakra and of course Major Sudhir Kumar posthumously he has been given the Ashok Chakra. Parambir Chakra as uh, all our viewers know is the highest gallantry award for exceptional act of bravery in, in war and Ashok Chakra away from the enemy. A magnificent view from the camera kept atop the India Gate. The Prime Minister's carcade would have just about arrived at India Gate where he will be leading the nation in commemorating the memory of all those brave soldiers who have laid down their lives. And it's indeed befitting. It's a befitting way to begin the parade which takes place a short while after the ceremony. The carcade has just drawn to a halt. The Prime Minister is uh, Lighting out, he will be uh, welcomed by the Defence Minister, the Raksha Mantri, George Fernandes, as also the Chiefs of the Three Services, and that's the Inter Services Guard at attention as the Prime Minister has just arrived at India Gate. With the arrival of Prime Minister at India Gate with the uh, Raksha Mantri, the Defence Minister, Sri George Fernandes, the Guard. Uh, has presented the salute that is the salami shast being ordered and the parade and the guard commander now will wait for the wreath to be laid this is a very solemn occasion indeed for our country to be honoring the fallen braves the martyrs the the guard as we have been told already Lieutenant Colonel K.K. Pant is the commander of the guard today and he must be feeling very proud on this occasion to be commanding this guard.
Prime Minister in his Achkan and the morning breeze uh, is actually adding a lot of colour and it's adding a lot of vigour to the entire ceremony. As the Prime Minister moves forward, he will lay his wreath and thereafter there will be a two-minute silence observed. This is the Shok's just order. And two minutes. Two minutes silence. The rouse will be sounded. The last pause was sounded, and then the two minute silence was observed. And once again, we have the buglers sounding the rouse. Prime Minister Atul Bihari Vajpayee led the nation in giving homage to the departed soldier of Indian Armed Forces. As we were mentioning even in the last one year, it has been tremendous work for our Defence Forces. They have come out with 
great honors in all aspects of life for the Defence Forces in India. They've shown ex exemplary courage in, hos in hospital terrain, in Kargil operations, and of course Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee signing at the visitor's book at Amar Jawan Jyoti. The tradition that has been followed for many years now. Remarkably, the whole nation, in, in fact, Indians all over, pledged tremendous support to the brave soldier. Voluntary contributions have poured in like never before. All this has been done so that supreme sacrifice does not go in vain. It doesn't go without saying that India has, of course, pursued the goals of peace and equality. But whenever war has been thrust upon us, we have faced the challenge unitedly. Even today, our soldiers are fighting a proxy war in the northern areas of the country. But the nation has not forgotten and shall not forget the debt it owes to the soldiers. Obviously, the government uh, has announced welfare packages for armed forces personnel throughout. And these have been thoroughly revamped. The Prime Minister, on way back to the vehicles, which will bring him back to the saluting place. The ex gratia for the Kargil martyrs was raised from raised to rupees 10 lakhs, besides uh, assistance for house, children's education, and others from the National Defense Fund. All this is due to the departed soldier and those who have suffered. The support goes not only from them, but from the whole family. And from Amar Jawan Jyoti at the India Gate, where the Prime Minister just laid a wreath to commemorate and pay homage to, uh, to pay homage to all those brave soldiers who have laid down their lives. The Prime Minister's car gate will move down Rajpath and arrive at the saluting base where he will lead the nation in awaiting the arrival of uh, the Honorable President of India, Shri K. R. Narayanan, as also our Honorable Chief Guest today, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mr. Ole Sugun Obasanjo. Mr. Obasanjo, of course, is the Chief Guest for today. And he's here on a state visit, a five-day state visit. And today he'll be participating in the Republic Day celebrations here in New Delhi. As the clouds are clearing and the sunlight is filtering through clouds and the day is getting brighter day by day, by minute by minute, I mean. Indeed, it's a beautiful sight. And that's uh, all the personnel on top of India Gate from where we are also getting a bird's eye view of the entire Rajpath at a tremendous height out there. And in a way, braving the cold breeze up there to bring us the wonderful visuals that we are getting to see from our camera team as well as commentary team for uh, radio up there. Now, in the uh, height of the India Gate is 42 meters. So we have uh, additional input, so that tells you how high those uh, people are standing at the moment and naturally getting a beautiful view. The Prime Minister's car gate coming down uh, Rajpath. Indeed, it's a beautiful sight, no doubt about it, with all the flags fluttering here, colourful flags, the national tricolour, all of them. What do you say, Praful? Uh, that's what uh, Nalin is. Uh, today's uh, the rain has removed uh, the dust from the air and the air has become very clear and we can appreciate the colours very much. And uh, looking at the cars coming down the Rajpath, uh, the first to arrive uh, will be uh, the Defence Secretary and the three chiefs and then the Raksha Mantri and they will receive the Prime Minister after the arrival. And here is the Vice Chief of Naval Staff who has arrived uh, today. Uh, and his Vice Admiral P.J. Jacob, PVSM, AVSM, VM, VSM and ADC. Uh, he will uh, take his place and uh, 
The three chiefs are already there. Here is uh, a Marsh, a Chief Marshal A.Y. Tipness and Mrs. Tipness who have arrived. Uh, a, a Chief Marshal A.Y. Tipness, uh, PVSM, AVSM, uh, uh, Vyusena uh, Medal and ADC and he uh, also has now come and taken the place and we have now Chief of the Army Staff General VP Malik, PVSM, AVSM, ADC. They will now wait for the arrival of the Raksha Mantri, the Defense Minister. We have Mrs. Malik also coming along and now we have Defense Secretary T.R. Prasad. Defense Secretary T.R. Prasad is with the three chiefs and we have T. George Fernandez, uh, the Defense Minister of India, looking very sprightly and very athletic indeed in this early morning. His lovely shawl on his left shoulder, and this is the these are the cars of the prime minister's entourage. Uh, this and they have arrived. The prime minister will be received by the Raksha Mantri and will be uh, thereafter greeted by the three chiefs. And there, are, when the once the prime minister takes his place, and we will then wait for the arrival of the vice president. In the meantime, Raksha Mantri is receiving the prime minister. And Sri George Fernandez receives Sri Atal Bihari Bajpayee. And of course, on this solemn occasion, the Gold Jubilee celebration of the Republic of India, it is indeed a very occasion. And we can see from the faces of the dignitaries and the leaders of the nation that how proud we all must be today. Prime Minister is being escorted by the Raksha Mantri and uh, he meets the three chiefs, H.E. General Malik and uh, the Vice Chief of Naval Staff, H.E. Uh, uh, Marshal Evai Tipness and the uh, Defence Secretary. And they have received the greetings from the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister now will take a seat. He will meet the other dignitaries and this is the occasion to greet all the people who have come out there and of course Raksha Mantri and Prime Minister will be discussing uh, the further events and this is the Vice President's carcade arriving Sri Krishnakant and as the drivers of the car place themselves accordingly incidentally they are very well trained for this job because the timing is perfect and the skill is impeccable for these sort of uh, tasks. The Vice President is being received and Sri Krishna Khan is being greeted by the Raksha Mantri, Defence Minister, Mrs. Krishna Khan is being greeted by the Prime Minister and thereafter they gre they're greeted by the dignitaries and the three chiefs and Vice President now will proceed towards the seat three chiefs, the army chief, the vice of the naval, vice chief of navy, the air chief and the defense secretary. The crowds really expecting big uh, celebrations to unfold. The parade uh, which will come from Rashtrapati Bhavan towards India Gate will finally culminate from New Delhi till Old Delhi. It will culminate at the Red Fort and therefore it will cover the entire Delhi, the spirit of Delhi. Delhi is a pulsating capital, the epicenter of power, a city steeped in history. Prime Minister Vajpayee meeting the dignitaries. Prime Minister is now uh, meeting the dignitaries in the VIP enclosure. That was the Speaker of the Lok Sabha, GMC Balayogi. There are cabinet colleagues. He's getting to uh, meet all of them as other dignitaries. And yes, in the backdrop, we can see the arrival of uh, the President of India, Sri K. R. Narayanan. Uh, that is the presidential bodyguard, the President's bodyguard on horses. That is, of course, uh, Srimati Narayanan. Uh, she arrives first and she will be uh, welcomed uh, at the saluting days and 
Her car is, in fact, uh, now coming to a halt just in front of the saluting base. That's Shrimati Usha Narayana. You know? The First Lady of India, Ms. Usha Narayan, is received at the base. Defence Minister, Mr. George Fernandes, Prime Minister, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, receiving the First Lady and offering her the greetings on this great day. As is customary at this time, as the President's uh, entourage draws closer to the saluting days, the melody of Swagatam greets uh, everyone here and adds to uh, the wonderful feeling that is all encompassing and makes each one of us feel proud to be a part of this historic occasion. And yes, of course, from the top of India Gate, one can see the President's bodyguard coming to a close to the saluting days. Along with the President, as Nalid was mentioning uh, some time ago, the Chief Guest of the Parade, uh, Mr. Ulusegun Vasanjo, the President of Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, will be arriving. Mr. Vasanjo is uh, not new to India. In fact, uh, he had done his uh, Staff College course at the Defence Services Staff College uh, in Wellington. He was earlier the Royal Engineers Young Officers uh, was a graduate from Shivanam, England. A commander of the engineering unit of the Nigerian army, he rose to become the head of the armed forces. And the president's limousine is now stopped in front of the DS. And the president's bodyguard, commanded by Colonel Mali, with second in command, uh, Major Rator. And here is the president of uh, federal uh, of Niger Nigeria. Mr. Obisanjo being greeted by the Raksha Mantri, the Prime Minister, and they of course discuss, and the Prime Minister has greeted the Raksha, the President of India, Sri Narayan, is now escorting uh, Mr. Obisanjo towards the DS with Raksha Mantri on their left, and they are greeted by the dignitaries. And here's uh, Chief of Army Staff, General Malik, shaking hands with Vice Chief of Naval Staff. And they greet um, uh, President Obisanjo. And President Obisanjo himself has been uh, the head of the Nigerian Army as well, has been trained in India as Major Krishna told us. And so he understands the military ceremonies and parade. President now and President's bodyguard. The President's bodyguard now will present the Rashtri salute to the dignitaries and we are waiting for that moment the President takes his place. The President's bodyguard, as I told you, commanded by Colonel Mali with number two Major Rathor and Honorary Lieutenant Bhavar Singh Rathor holding the pride of the place. Another facet of uh, our uh, chief guest's uh, personality today is uh, that he has authored several books and uh, is an avid sportsman as well. That's right, uh, Major Vinod. He is has been a sportsman and he has uh, written a number of books. As I as you had said, he has been trained in our uh, Defence Services Staff College, so he understands the the meaning of these military ceremonies. Now, he, President Obisanjo is greeting the, the um, uh, Mrs. Narayanan and uh, Mrs. Krishnakant and he takes his place and now they wait for the Rashtri salute. Major Colonel Mali, 
representing the Rashtra Salute to President of India. one field battery of 12 field regiment the 25 pounders presenting 21 gun salute Colonel Mali now orders his presence bodyguard to turn left and their ma right towards India gate to ride off from the from the in front of the dais and uh, Major Vinod Krishna you can give us the Description that is of the magnificent uh, uniform of the President's bodyguard, the senior most uh, regiment of the Indian Army, commanded uh, by Colonel G.S. Mali, as we've been talking about. It's a great honor Baram, for Baram, any, uh, Baram, any officer Baram, to command Baram, this uh, wonderful, Baram, glorious Baram, regiment. Baram, and now the gallantry Baram, Manoj Kumar Pandey, 11th Gurkha Rifles, ki pehli Battalion, Marano Parant. कैप्टन मनोज कुमार पांडे ने ऑपरेशन विजय के दौरान वीरतापूर्वक किए गए कई आक्रमणों में भाग लिया और जब्बार पहाड़ी पर कब्जे सहित बटालिक सेक्टर में घुसपैठियों को भारी नुकसान पहुंचाते हुए पीछे खदेड़ दिया दो और तीन जुलाई 1999 की रात को खालूबार की ओर जाते समय जैसे ही उनकी प्लाटून अपने अंतिम लक्ष्य के करीब ही थी वो आसपास की पहाड़ियों से शत्रु द्वारा की जा रही भारी और सघन गोलीबारी की चपेट में आ गए कैप्टन पांडे को इन अड़चन पैदा करने वाले ठिकानों से शत्रु के सफाए का कार्य सौंपा गया था ताकि अत्यंत जोखिमपूर्ण स्थान होने पर कारण उनके बटालियन रोशनी होने से पहले वहां से निकल जाए वो शत्रु की गहन गोलीबारी के बीच से तुरंत अपने प्लाटून को एक ऊंचे ठिकाने पर ले गए और एक टुकड़ी को दाहिनी ओर से शत्रु के सफाए के लिए भेजते हुए स्वयं बाई ओर से शत्रु के सफाई के लिए बढ़े निर्भयता से शत्रु के प्रथम ठिकाने पर धावा बोलकर उन्होंने दो शत्रुओं को मार गिराया और दो अन्य शत्रुओं को मारकर दूसरे ठिकाने को भी नष्ट कर दिया तीसरे ठिकाने को नष्ट करते समय उनका कंधा और पैर जख्मी हो गए बिना डरे और अपने गंभीर जख्मों की परवाह न करते हुए वो अपने साथियों को उत्साहित करते हुए चौथे ठिकाने पर धावा बोलने के लिए सबसे आगे रहे माथे पर एमएमजी की प्राण घातक गोलियां खाने के बावजूद उन्होंने चौथे ठिकाने को भी एक ग्रेनेड से नष्ट कर दिया कैप्टन पांडे के इस अनन्य साहस के फलस्वरूप बाकी कंपनियों को एक ठोस ठिकाना मिल गया जिससे अंततः खालूबार पर कब्जा कर लिया गया यद्यपि अफसर अपने जख्मों के कारण वीर गति को प्राप्त हो गया इस प्रकार कैप्टन मनोज कुमार पांडे ने अति असाधारण वीरता अदम्य साहस उत्कृष्ट नेतृत्व और कर्तव्य निष्ठा का परिचय देते हुए भारतीय सेना की उच्चतम परंपराओं के अनुरूप सर्वोच्च बलिदान दिया लेफ्टिनेंट एक्टिंग कैप्टन मनोज कुमार पांडे के पिता श्री गोपीचंद पांडे लेफ्टिनेंट मनोज कुमार पांडे फादर Mr. Gopichan Pandey receiving the highest honor Param Veer Chakra Grenadier 
अब हवालदार योगेंद्र सिंह यादव 18 ग्रेनेडियर्स हवालदार योगेंद्र सिंह यादव तीन और चार जुलाई उन्नीस की रात को टाइगर हिल पर कब्जा करने के लिए गठित घातक प्लाटून की एक अग्रिम टुकड़ी के सदस्य थे टाइगर हिल तक पहुंचने का रास्ता सपाट सीधा खड़ा बर्फीला और चट्टानी था हवालदार योगेंद्र सिंह यादव ने संभावित खतरे की परवाह किए बिना स्वतः ही टुकड़ी के आगे चलने की पेशकश की और अपनी टीम को पहाड़ी पर चढ़ाने के लिए रस्सी लटका दी इस दल को देखकर शत्रु ने स्वचालित हथियारों ग्रेनेड रॉकेट और तोपखाने से घनी गोलाबारी शुरू कर दी परिणाम स्वरूप टुकड़ी के कमांडर और अन्य दो साथी मारे गए और प्लाटून वहीं रुक गई स्थिति की गंभीरता को भांपते हुए हवालदार यादव दुश्मन को खत्म करने के लिए रेंग कर उसके ठिकाने तक पहुंच गए परंतु इसी दौरान उनको अनेक घाव लग गए अपने घावों की परवाह किए बिना और शत्रु की भारी गोलाबारी के बीच हवालदार यादव ने ग्रेनेड फेंकते हुए दुश्मन के ठिकाने की ओर बढ़ना जारी रखा और अपने हथियारों से भी गोलीबारी करते रहे आमने सामने की इस लड़ाई में उन्होंने चार शत्रु सैनिकों को मार गिराया और उनके स्वचालित हथियारों की गोलीबारी को शांत कर दिया गोलियां लगने के कारण भारी घावों के बावजूद उन्होंने वहां से हटाए जाने से मना कर दिया और आक्रमण जारी रखा उनके साहस से प्रभावित होकर प्लाटून ने नए जोश के साथ शत्रु के अन्य ठिकानों पर धावा बोल दिया और पर कब्जा कर लिया इस प्रकार हवलदार योगेंद्र सिंह यादव ने अत्यंत विकट परिस्थितियों में अति असाधारण साहस अदम्य वीरता उच्च मनोबल और दृढ़ निश्चय का परिचय दिया हवालदार योगेंद्र सिंह यादव Yogendra Singh Yadav from 18 Grenadiers being honored for conspicuous courage indomitable gallantry grit and determination under extreme adverse circumstances honored with paramvir chakra Hawaldar Yadav captured the Tiger Hill leading his Ghatak Datu अब हवालदार संजय कुमार तेरा जम्मू कश्मीर राइफल्स हवालदार संजय कुमार 4 जुलाई उन्नीस को मशको घाटी में पॉइंट के फ्लैट टॉप क्षेत्र पर कब्जा करने के लिए भेजे गए आक्रमण दस्ते के अग्रिम स्काउट के रूप में कार्य करने के लिए स्वेच्छा से आगे आए इस आक्रमण के दौरान जब एक संघर्ष से दुश्मन ने स्वचालित गोलीबारी करके जबरदस्त चुनौती देते हुए दस्ते को रोक दिया तो स्थिति की गंभीरता को भांपते हुए हवालदार संजय कुमार ने अपनी जान की परवाह न करते हुए दुश्मन पर धावा बोल दिया आमने सामने की इस लड़ाई में उन्होंने तीन घुसपैठियों को मार गिराया लेकिन खुद भी गंभीर रूप से घायल हो गए अपने घावों की परवाह न करते हुए उन्होंने दूसरे संगर पर धावा बोल दिया जिससे दुश्मन एकदम भौचक के रह गए और वो एक यूनिवर्सल मशीन गन छोड़कर भागने लगे हवालदार संजय कुमार ने वो यूनिवर्सल मशीन गन संभाली और भागते हुए दुश्मनों को मार गिराया भारी मात्रा में खून बहने के बावजूद उन्होंने वहां से ना कर दिया उनकी साहसपूर्ण कार्यवाही से उनके साथियों को प्रेरणा मिली और उन्होंने दुर्गम भूभाग की परवाह न करते हुए दुश्मन पर धावा बोल दिया और उसके कब्जे से फ्लैट टॉप क्षेत्र छीन लिया इस प्रकार हवलदार संजय कुमार ने दुश्मन के सामने अत्यंत उच्च कोटि के उत्कृष्ट वीरता अदम्य साहस और कर्तव्य निष्ठा का परिचय दिया हवलदार संजय कुमार हवलदार संजय कुमार 13 जम्मू एंड कश्मीर राइफल्स डिस्प्लेड मोस्ट कंस्पिक्यूस गैलेंट्री कूल करेज एंड डिवोशन टू ड्यूटी इन एन एक्सेप्शनली अनकंफर्टेबल सर्कमस्टांस एडवर्स सर्कमस्टांसिस परमवीर चक्र कैप्टन विक्रम बत्रा तेरा जम्मू कश्मीर राइफल्स मनोरोपरांत ऑपरेशन विजय के दौरान 20 जून 1999 को डेल्टा कंपनी कमांडर कैप्टन विक्रम बत्रा को पॉइंट पर आक्रमण करने का दायित्व सौंपा गया 
कैप्टन बत्रा अपनी कंपनी के साथ घूमकर पूर्व दिशा की ओर से उस क्षेत्र की तरफ बढ़े और बिना शत्रु को भनक लगे हुए उसके मारक दूरी के भीतर तक पहुंच गए कैप्टन बत्रा ने अपने दस्ते को पुनर्गठित किया और उन्हें दुश्मन के ठिकानों पर सीधे आक्रमण के लिए प्रेरित किया सबसे आगे रहकर दस्ते का नेतृत्व करते हुए उन्होंने बड़ी निडरता से शत्रु पर धावा बोल दिया और आमने सामने की गुत्थम गुत्था लड़ाई में उनमें से चार को मार डाला सात जुलाई उन्नीस को पॉइंट के पास एक अन्य सैन्य कार्रवाई में उनकी कंपनी को ऊंचाई पर एक ऐसी सखरी चोटी से दुश्मन के सफाई का कार्य सौंपा गया था जिसके दोनों ओर खड़ी ढलान थी और जिसके एकमात्र रास्ते की शत्रु ने भारी संख्या में नाकाबंदी की हुई थी कार्रवाई को शीघ्र पूरा करने के लिए कैप्टन बत्रा ने एक संकीर्ण पठार के पास से शत्रु ठिकानों पर आक्रमण कर दिया और आमने सामने की भीषण गुत्थम गुत्था लड़ाई में अत्यंत निकट से पांच शत्रु सैनिकों को मार गिराया गंभीर जख्म लग जाने के बावजूद वो रेंगते हुए शत्रु की ओर बढ़े और ग्रेनेड फेंके जिससे उस ठिकाने पर शत्रु का सफाया हो गया अपनी जान की तनिक भी परवाह न करते हुए और सबसे आगे रहकर उन्होंने अपने साथी जवानों को एकत्र करके आक्रमण के लिए प्रेरित किया और दुश्मन की भारी गोलाबारी के सम्मुख एक लगभग असंभव सैन्य कार्य को पूरा कर दिखाया किंतु जख्मों के कारण ये अफसर वीर गति को प्राप्त हुआ उनके निडरतापूर्ण कार्य से प्रेरित उनके साथी जवान प्रतिशोध लेने के लिए शत्रु पर टूट पड़े और शत्रु का सफाया करते हुए पॉइंट चार आठ सात पांच पर कब्जा कर लिया इस प्रकार कैप्टन विक्रम बत्रा ने शत्रु के सम्मुख अत्यंत उत्कृष्ट व्यक्तिगत वीरता और उच्चतम कोटि के नेतृत्व का प्रदर्शन करते हुए भारतीय सेना की उच्चतम परंपराओं के अनुरूप अपना सर्वोच्च बलिदान दिया कैप्टन विक्रम बत्रा के पिता श्री गिरधारी लाल बत्रा श्री गिरधारी लाल दत्ता फादर ऑफ श्री गिरधारी लाल बत्रा फादर ऑफ लेट कैप्टन विक्रम बत्रा रिसीविंग द परमवीर चक्र फॉर द सेक्रीफाइस ऑफ हिस्स सन अति असाधारण वीरता के लिए अशोक चक्र मेजर सुधीर कुमार बाल टू सेना मेडल नौ पैरा विशेष बल मरणोपरांत उनतीस अगस्त उन्नीस को प्रातः साढ़े आठ बजे मेजर सुधीर कुमार पांच जवानों के एक स्कॉट को लेकर जम्मू कश्मीर के कुपवाड़ा जिले के हफरूदा जंगल के घनी झाड़ियों की ओर बढ़े उन्हें आतंकवादियों की आवाजें सुनाई दी पर वे नजर नहीं आए मेजर सुधीर कुमार अपने साथी के साथ रेंगते हुए आगे बढ़े जब वे पहाड़ी पर पहुंचे तो उन्हें केवल चार मीटर की दूरी पर खड़े दो सशस्त्र आतंकवादी और नीचे उनका एक बड़ा और बंद ठिकाना नजर आया मेजर सुधीर कुमार ने नजदीकी संतरी पर गोली चलाकर उसे खत्म कर दिया और फिर दूसरे संतरी पर आक्रमण कर दिया किंतु वह कूद कर अपने ठिकाने में जा घुसा मेजर सुधीर कुमार ने बिना हिचकिचाहट अपने साथी द्वारा की जा रही गोलीबारी की आड़ लेकर आतंकवादियों के ठिकाने पर धावा बोल दिया उस ठिकाने में मौजूद लगभग बीस आतंकवादी मेजर सुधीर कुमार की इस कार्रवाई से भौचक के रह गए और वहां से निकल भागने के प्रयास में बाहर दौड़े मेजर सुधीर कुमार अकेले ही उनके साथ गुत्थम गुत्था हो गए और केवल दो मीटर की दूरी से उन पर गोलीबारी कर चार आतंकवादियों को मार गिराया इस कार्रवाई में उनके चेहरे छाती और बाजू में कई गोलियां लग गईं और वो उस ठिकाने के द्वार पर गिर पड़े घायल होने के बावजूद मेजर सुधीर कुमार ने अपने सभी ट्रुप कमांडरों और आसपास तैनात टुकड़ियों को रेडियो सेट पर निर्देश दिया कि वे डटे रहें और बचे हुए आतंकवादियों को भागने न दें 35 मिनट के पश्चात जब दोनों ओर से गोलीबारी रुक गई तभी वो वहां से हटाए जाने के लिए तैयार हुए अत्यधिक रक्त बहते जाने के बावजूद वो संपर्क क्षेत्र में अपने सैन्य बलों को रेडियो सेट से अनुदेश देते रहे और रेडियो सेट थामे हुए ही वीर गति को प्राप्त हुए मेजर सुधीर कुमार ने इस प्रकार अति उत्कृष्ट बहादुरी साहस और अतुलनीय शौर्य का प्रदर्शन करते हुए भारतीय सेना की उच्चतम परंपराओं के अनुरूप सर्वोच्च बलिदान दिया मेजर सुधीर कुमार के पिता श्री रुलिया राम वालिया श्री रुलिया राम वालिया 
Major Sudhir Kumar's father. Major Sudhir Kumar, he was already a decorated soldier. He was barred to Sena medal. He was also recommended for a gallantry award during Kargil operations. Of course, he got Shok Chakra. The, the highest peacetime gallantry award. And uh, we have now four Mi-17 helicopters in ensign formation coming into Shah Rose Petal. The lead helicopter, commanded by Wing Commander S. Bharti, failing the national tricolor and other three helicopters with the services ensign. Now, Shah the Rose Petals over the crowd to on the solemn occasion. The Mi-17 helicopters are very versatile. They prove the worth during the Kargil operation. Being uh, logistic support helicopters have worked as gun helicopters. And that also marks the beginning of the parade. That's the three services, that's the band, composite band opposite the salute in case, which has begun playing the music and we can then see the arrival of the parade commander, Major General Surendra Kumar Avasti, ABSM and he is the General Officer Commanding of Delhi Region, Delhi Area. He was commissioned in the Punjab Regiment in 1963 and is a graduate of the Defence Services Staff College Wellington and the Visitoral Academy in Russia. That's the President taking the salute and this marks the beginning of uh, the parade itself. And that's the parade commanders of course followed by Brigadier Rajeshwar Singh, BSM and he's the Deputy General Officer Commanding Delhi Area. He in fact leads the parade from India Gate onto Chandni Chow where it culminates. The parade commander and uh, the second in command of the parade, Brigadier Rajeshwar Singh, BSM. And now the award winners, uh, past award winners who were uh, honored by the nation, who have demonstrated the highest example of service before self. Lieutenant Colonel Dhan Singh Thapa, Parambir Chakra. Also accompanying him are Colonel C.A. Pathwala, Ashok Chakra, Subedar Major Bana Singh, PVC, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Jasram Singh, Ashok Chakra, Naik Narbadur Thapa, Ashok Chakra, Subedar Honorary Captain Sundar Singh, Ashok Chakra, Naib Subeda Chering Mutub, Ashok Chakra, Shri Hukum Singh, Ashok Chakra, Shri Burelal, Ashok Chakra, Shri Govind Singh, Ashok Chakra, Gallant people, pride in their eyes is apparent. That is the mounted contingent, Captain Mehar Virk, and following him is Captain Urmila Nen, a lady officer of the this mounted contingent of the Army Servant Corps. The President taking their salute. They are the proud Savars on their elegant rights. And they provide logistic support to the Indian Army with their motto Seva Asmakam Dharma. This is the 61st Cavalry, in fact, uh, led by Major Sunil Shivdas. This is the only cavalry regiment in the whole world today. 20 battle honors, and six theatre honors uh, to their credit. This regiment has also got the distinction of leading one of the last recorded cavalry charge in history when it captured the Turkish Air Force Haifa in the Palestinian World War I. Winning the regiment but battalion honor, battle honor actually, actually Haifa. Battle honor Haifa. It passed 1965 and 71 operations. Army Service Corps on led by Captain Mehar Wick. Following him is Captain Urmila Nath, a lady of the Air Force. Proud Savars, the American flight. They ride past uh, the President's base. This will be a steadfast commitment to the logistic support of the Indian Army. Their motto, Seva Asmat Amdhar. Operation 
recently following the mountain contingent, we can see the MBT Arjun, which is the main battle tank Arjun of the 43 Armored Regiment. This tank is fully designed and developed by a defense research and development organization and is rated as one of the best, three best tanks in the world today. It's commanded by Major Anil Kumar Malik and it turns towards the Saluti base and his ship is the Supreme Commander. Narayanan. This tank is in fact fitted with a 120 mm gun, a 12.7 mm anti aircraft gun, and a co accurate 7.62 mm machine gun. Arjun has an accurate and fast target acquisition capability during day and night in all types of weather. It's a fast and highly maneuverable tank, even in the most difficult terrain. It has this contingent has won one Seva medal, one Shorya Chakra. And now in front of the DS is the T-72 tank Ajay. Uh, this contingent is commanded by Captain Anuj Singh Luthra and uh, Gun Dips in salute to the President of India. It's a very versatile tank, very fast moving in the tactical battle area. It moves at close to 60 kilometers per hour and can fire three types of ammunition and uh, it is also has got a 125 millimeter smooth bore gun and uh, this is the tank crew saluting uh, to the supreme commander of the indian armed forces and president naran taking the salute of the proud tank column the t-72s and thereafter we have now Captain S. Pradeep Kumar, commanding the 155mm FH-77B Hoyadza guns. These guns can be towed by their own vehicle, Scania. Here is the Captain Pradeep Kumar presenting his salute to the President of India and President receiving the salute. Really appreciating the FH-177B Captain Pradeep Kumar continues towards India Gate. These, these 155mm gun can operate in all terrain from uh, the desert to uh, Kargil up towards Siachen and this is the crew smartly sitting and in front of passing the President's DS and these are the self-propelled FH-77B. The self-propelled uh, gun can also move in a shoot and scoot manner in the tactical battle area without the towing uh, vehicle of Scania. The next is Prithvi missile. It can be called the Brahmastra for any field commander led by Major Rakesh Joshi. State of the art missile technology, in fact, is the best in the world. The accuracy and awesome destructive capability of the weapon system is capable of striking terror in the heart of the enemy. It has select officers, JCOs, and men from the regiment of artillery. Diverse culture of a country is finely tuned into this regiment to effectively deliver the weapon to the and here we see Sankushka air defense weapon system led by Captain Ashish Punia. This is an air defense weapon system, 514 air defense regiment, self propelled. It is used to provide low and medium level air defense to the mechanized forces. The weapon is of Russian origin. The only weapon system of its kind, it contains both guns and missiles on single track chassis missile of the system can target up to 8 kilometers effectively and 30 millimeter guns are effective at a good range of 4 kilometers. 5,000 rounds per minute you can fire as an extremely potent anti-aircraft weapon system. And immediately following that is the improved reporter radar 785 radar battery which has been commanded by Lieutenant Sunil Yadav.